So uh, hello and welcome to another tutorial. And uh, in this tutorial, what we are going to do, we are going to look at uh, how we can upload uh, data into Geonode. So Geonode is a framework or it's a tool that helps us in uh, managing the geospatial data information. And uh, in readiness or in preparation with this tutorial, I downloaded uh, some data from uh, Natural Earth. Uh, natural Earth, it's a website that you can find uh, you know, uh, free uh, to use uh, geospatial data. So here it is in the download section. So I was able to download the data and I was also able to download and raster image from Sentinel. Uh, so Sentinel, they have a Sentinel Open Hub, uh, which you can use to uh, download the Sentinel data. And alternatively, if you do not want to use uh, to go for this one, you have to log in into these open data. Oh, their website is probably not working. You can use the semi automatic classification plugin in QGIS uh, desktop. So, since I already have the data, what I'm going to do, um, I've already logged in. Uh, I'll still use the admin. I won't go into the details of creating users. Uh, maybe that is can do it some other time. So I'll navigate into the data and under data we have layers. Uh, yeah, I still have this problem of uh, the text not displaying. So allow me to restore the default theme. Uh, probably you can check how how that can be configured. Yeah, so I'll just switch back to this. You see that you can be able to see the texts, the details. So you click on upload layers. When you click on upload layers, it displays this permission, uh, rather this window that has uh, some titles and permissions on who can view and then download and edit. So you can control the permissions here. Uh, so our interest is uh, 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 uploading the data in Geonode. So what we are going to do, we are going to, I, I already have this uh, data with me here. So there are two methods. You can drag and drop the files here. Uh, into this uh, uh, panel here. So I'm going to click on the shape file and then I can uh, just click the uh, drop and click. And uh, you'll notice one thing, it has only, sh it only shows the shape file and it is, uh, there's some issue it, ha it had displayed that it is missing a PRJ, which is the projection file and CPG and the rest. So I'm just going to remove and click on all of these files are not all rather we are at least have the cpg the projection prg file shape file and the shx uh, that we are gonna drop them here so it's saying that it is missing a dbf uh, database file which is a dbf file and i believe this is the dbf file oh. so be careful when you're uh, you are drop, dropping it because I've dropped it somewhere else and it has I think, downloaded it in the browser instead. So we have these files. Uh, so the next thing we are going to do is uh, you can select the, uni the Unicode, the default uh, character set, but we will stick to UTF-8, which is the default, and then click on Upload. And now it will say that your upload has started performing GeoServer configuration setup. So let me explain what is happening here a little bit uh, on the backend side. Yeah. So we have uh, this we have this window here. So whenever I run the Docker ps command, we saw that we have these containers, all these uh, containers that are running, and then there's something else uh, that there are things that we call Docker volumes that are used to persist data. I think I had mentioned this in my first video. So you can look at the Docker, the volumes that are present in the system by typing Docker volume, volumes ls, Docker volume ls. So now we have something here that is called Geonode data. And we also have the DB uh, data. So whenever we upload these uh, any data into Geonode, what happens is that it 
it uh, saves the data or it saves the data into the database and uh, the file themselves that we have uploaded they are saved in some folder that is called the uploaded folder i believe which is in the geonode file system and i believe that's what we could uh, probably find into in these uh, my geonode data volume so whenever you upload that data it should go at least it should go somewhere it should be it will be saved somewhere in a, in your server in whichever server that you have saved uh, you have installed your geonode so what is coming into play is that these two volumes are the ones which are playing the part, the GeoNode DB data and uh, GeoNode uh, data. So they kind of persist, we call it persisting uh, of that data. So yeah, so that's just worth mentioning. So it is still uploading. And then I think it shows the progress up here. Uh, we have, right now we are at 50%. Then we have some button here that says the file needs additional configuration to complete. Please click on the button to fill the required configuration. So it is kind of stuck uh, until we do some configuration. So I'll click on that button and uh, let's see where it takes us. So depending on the size of the data, and also, the, I, I believe there are also checks, there are validation checks that it does. So, yeah, so there's something that it is asking here. Inspect data. It is kind of telling us to look at uh, if this data is, uh, is fine. So, Let's just give it some time as it does its thing. So I'm going to fast forward the video up to a point where we have been able to start. Oh, okay. I think luckily it has uh, uploaded the data. So Geonode uses something that we call Map Store. Uh, it's a standalone tool or software that is used in displaying, uh, in rendering maps. And so they replaced the, initially we had open layers in Geonode the open layers framework so we are using this map store uh, which i think it has incorporated open layers and leaflet yeah if i'm not uh, wrong about that so this is uh, the open layers interface so if now we click on the data and we come to layers you'll we'll find that there is one layer that as we have already uploaded you can also create a map from this layer and uh, surely let's kind of do that yeah, so this is the boot the splash screen for map uh, for map store. Yeah, so we so this is a map uh, for the world, and then we can I believe we can add layers from whenever from Geo Server. We can also change the visibility of the layer on the side here. We can add uh, layer groups and. Uh, we can also be able to change query objects that are in the map. You can switch to full extent, you can decrease zoom, you can also show your location when you click on this. I think it uses a geo IP. So it says know your location. So I won't I do not I do not need for it to show me my location. And you notice there's something that shows here location access has been denied. So I'll upload the other two the other two layers that I'm going to upload. This is a polygon shape file. So I'm going to upload now using a different method. We use the drag and drop. So in this method, we are going to add uh, point layers and ensure that you have clicked on these those four files that constitute the shape file, the S3 shape file. So it's doing its thing. Uh, let's see how it, uh, it will, how much time it will take. So as it's uploading, you can also check on other items. We have the document, we have remote services, and we also have this uploading and creating. You can also create a layer from scratch. And you can also upload uh, documents and remote services. So yeah, so it has uploaded the populated places. Let's see how they look like in the layer. 
another thing that I forgot to mention is that we have these different links here. We have the attributes. These are the fields that are on the data. Uh, you can share this data via email, Facebook, or Twitter. Uh, you can also add some ratings there. You can add comments. You can favorite that layer. Uh, you can also download the layer just as you have uploaded. Some kind of uh, reverse engineering concept where you can download it in the form of these items. And then we also have the metadata, which you can check. And uh, the next, we are going to upload a line shape file. So the procedure is more or less the same. Let's upload the reverse and select center lines layer. And you see that it also shows the format of the file that is going to be being uploaded. So I believe it's going to complete very short while. And, uh, yeah, so it has uploaded the layer. Let's just check the layout. So for better understanding of this, uh, the working of this uh, SDI software, you may need to have some understanding in also uh, the projection, what you call the projection system that's uh, used in uh, GIS. Uh, I'm not sure if it, is in the, if it is in the metadata. Uh, yeah, so we have this projection system. So we need to understand what is some about, something about it because you may upload a layer that is that does not have the correct projection. It's not going to display. So finally, we are going to upload a raster file. I don't know how long it's going to take because it's quite it's quite big. Right, let me see how it looks, how, how big it is in the oops in the system. Yes, yeah, so it's about five hundred MB. Ah, right, let's see. It's not very large though. And the upload has started. Yeah, so you can navigate through your web, through the GeoNode site as, as the layer uploads. Uh, and uh, once it has completed to upload, it's going to show us uh, display something. So we can also upload documents while that raster layer is uploading, and it shows all the supported documents here. Yeah, zip files, bitmaps. Can just add a name title sample doc, um, and I'm going to look uh, search for some documents here. Yeah, we have this text document, and then I can just add some fictitious URL. Then I'll link it to you can link it to a layer that has already been uploaded, and this is countries. Then I'll just click. So it's complaining that a document cannot have, have both a file and a URL. So let's let me remove this since it is internal. So it's saying the document must be. Uh, I hope it has not uploaded because I'll probably be uploading twice. Yeah, so it has uploaded, and if you want to view the the document itself, you can check on it. And uh, if you click on it, yeah, it's going to show the content. Since this is a text file, this is what it has. It only has this text. So we'll just close it. And uh, you can be able to upload uh, different documents, PDFs, you know, uh, zip files, and the rest. So let's go back to layers. I'm not sure if my master layer has uploaded. So we have three vector layers. We have uh, I've not added categories. Uh, who is responsible? I've uploaded it as the admin, so that's why we have that. And uh, you can search by region and extent. 
Yeah, so I'm going to skip forward to a uh, pl uh, place where the, the layer has been uploaded, the raster layer. So we have been able to upload the, the raster, uh, as denoted here, 100%. So let's see the to display has uh, kind of displayed it on the layers. Uh, yeah, so this is how it looks like. Uh, it has been placed on top of the open street. This is an open street map base map. Uh, it's uh, an image for Lake somewhere in Lake Trukan in Kenya. So this is what we have. Yeah, so this summarizes the the uploading of layers onto Geonode. And uh, of, of, uh, I hope this helps us to to work with Geonode in terms of uploading layers and the rest. So we also have something before we forget, uh, remote services. So the remote services that are supported, these are, there's some videos I have done in my GeoServer tutorial series that talks about web map services and web server and uh, web tile services. So we have this web map service. You can add uh, uh, the service uh, URL. For instance, let's see whether we have demo.geonode.org. Uh, let's see whether we can have the WMS. So I'll just quickly go into GeoServer. GeoServer. And then let's see if we can get this. So let me see if I can copy this WMS link. So I'm not sure if it will register, I'm just trying. But this layer, this service, you can add remote services from other WMS, uh, even ArcGIS, REST service, GeoNode, GeoServer, a server that is running onto GeoServer. Uh, yeah, so it's trying to connect. Yeah, I hope it will be, it will be lucky. I should have truncated these get capabilities. Yeah, so while it's connecting to the service, we have these layer, these links that are on the footer. You can change the la the language. You can you know, create your own about page. And of course, we have these links, the data links, the maps, about. Uh, so in the next uh, tutorial, we are going to see, uh, we are going to see how we can uh, read the data uh, that is in Geonode uh, from the, Q, the QGIS desktop. Okay. So it has imported, I believe, I think it has probably have so many layers, so that's why it was taking some time. So it is showing all these layers and you can filter, you can choose to filter whichever layer that you want to create. So I'll just click on one, some random, uh, I believe this is a workspace. So I just created, selected one workspace. I do not want to click all of them because it will take a lot of time trying to connect it to the layer and importing that data. So you'll notice that there's some progress that is running on the tab up here. So selected resources have been imported. So let's go to the service details. So this is a, a service that we have uh, connected to. It is It exists in stable.gno.org. And it is an OWS OGC web services. And in particular, yeah, it supports WFS web feature service and web map service. So I'll share the link to my uh, tutorial on these two while using uh, GeoServer. So let's click on the layers. And you'll notice that now our layers are, uh, there's are additional layers that you, you are not the ones who have created them. So they are being loaded from that remote uh, site. So like this one, uh, it's, it has some details on Bangladesh, MSR rehabilitation. I don't know what that is, but 
uh, this one just shows us how yeah, we, we have been able to add our layer from a remote uh, web service. So if we check on the metadata details, you can see the info, all the information that is here. And uh, then we have layers. I'll go back to layers and let's see if we have any other. We do not have any other. We only have one remote layer, three vector layers and one roster layer. So that is on the remote services. And uh, yeah, if you want to create uh, applications, you can add them, you can create them. Uh, using the underlying Django framework and maybe add them on to these uh, their links here. Alternatively, you can also create apps using the GeoStory. So there's what you call GeoStory that comes with MapStore. So you can create a GeoStory uh, maybe about a phenomena that can be displayed on the map. Even could could be statistics and the rest. So let's see if we can be able to look at uh, MapStore GeoStory quickly so that I can try and explain what that means. We are not going to create geo stories in this uh, showcase. Mm -hmm. but this is a user interface for creating the geo story. Uh, let me see if we have this is a demo for the map store. Probably later on, we may look at App Store. Yeah, so we have uh, mapstore.geosolutions, which is a company that uh, developed it. And we have the GeoStories section here. So we have uh, an example. Let me see this demo. So this is a geo, an example of a GeoStory. You can create a, you know, a story on uh, that involves the maps, you know, about anything like this one is a history of high altitude astronomical observations uh, uh, where they are located you'll notice that it is like a blog of sorts that has you know it has maps underlying maps yeah so it's quite amazing so this is uh, the work of uh, map store uh, that is uh, coupled with geonode so that summarizes our uh, our video uh, tutorial and uh, we have been able to so far to upload the data and to add remote services and also to upload or demonstrate how to upload documents so if you like the video uh, kindly share uh, click like and also subscribe to my channel uh, it shows uh, it's quite uh, uh, supporting the channel uh, and also if you feel free to click on the bell icon so that whenever i upload uh, content on my channel you can be able to get a notification and uh, yeah so let's uh, enjoy the geonode and happy uh, happy hacking uh, using geonode thank you